As it's Halloween, I just thought I'd discuss one particular aspect of Stan Gucci's work that touches on possession and uh, supernatural beings. So this is mainly taken from the first chapter of Total Man. There are certain themes that repeat in literature and folklore. And they repeat for because they appeal to us and our, our psyche. They appeal to us in a, in a way that says something to our unconscious about our fears or our desires. The first story that we're going to look at is Faust. Faust is the story of a, an elderly scholar or scientist, I suppose, who feels that he hasn't quite achieved the results that he wanted in his life in his quest for knowledge. So he decides to summon a, a demon or the devil and make a pact with him to learn the secrets that he hadn't learned during his secular research. Um, this ends up not working out very well for Faust. He manages to get the girl, the young girl that he wanted as his bride. And she, before they can get married, she has a baby and she ends up murdering the baby because it's out of wedlock. And everything goes wrong for him. And he doesn't learn any secrets. And so eventually the devil comes and takes his soul. Faust is one of the most popular stories of Western literature. It's been rewritten over and over again. It's been made into books, plays and films. The second story that we're going to look at is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Dr. Jekyll is a man of science who is obsessed with good and evil. In his studies, he discovers an elixir that when drunk brings out a side of him that never that he never knew existed and he has no control over and this is Mr Hyde so Mr Hyde gets up to all sorts of nefarious activities and when Dr Jekyll finally gains control of his body again he doesn't remember what Mr Hyde done but eventually Mr Hyde appears without the elixir and almost completely takes over the body that the two of them are sharing. In a final moment of lucidity, Dr Jekyll realises what a mistake he's made and he commits suicide. This story, again, has been made into lots of films and appears to be another enduring story of Western literature. The third story is Dracula, or the, the myth of the vampire. Dracula 
has come from a foreign land. He is brought over with his native soil that he has to sleep in to gain his energy. And he bites people and drinks their blood and turns them into vampires if he doesn't kill them. An interesting thing with Dracula is that he has hairy hands and a monobrow or a large brow ridge. And he is killed by sunlight. Dracula has been made into many stories. It's it's for one, it's an old European story to start with before Dracula. But Bram Stoker's Dracula has been made into many films. Um, it's become a figure of horror and has been made into films like Blackula and so there's a black Dracula, there's been comedy Draculas, there's been cartoon Draculas, there's been children Draculas. So there's obviously something there that, that speaks to our unconscious. The next story we're going to look at related to Dracula is the werewolf. Dracula and the werewolf are pretty similar. They both have an animal instinct that takes them over at night and they go around biting other people with fanged teeth. The werewolf comes out under the full moon. So we have a night symbolism again. It's a creature of the night. Another horror theme we're going to look at is Frankenstein. Frankenstein is a scientist who is on a quest to find the spark of life. He builds a body out of dead young men's body parts and he finds a way to animate it and effectively creates another man but this plan goes horribly wrong and he ends up in a fight for his life against his own creation essentially frankenstein is about putting life into inanimate objects and making them real this could also be seen as a similar theme with puppets and puppet shows and puppet masters and even AI is um, a fantasy about animating inanimate objects and somehow giving life to something that has been made by the hands of man. It always goes wrong. It always ends in a bad place because the monster usually turns on its creator. The last horror theme we're going to look at here is zombies. Zombies are animated dead bodies. So when the body dies or one is bitten by another zombie, one turns into a zombie. You lose total control of your body. You are no, you're no longer alive, but something that was inside your body instead takes over and carries on living. Or we could say death has taken over. There is, however, no redemption for the zombie. What all of these stories say about the human psyche is that there is an obsession with possession 
or as Stan puts it in total man with being possessed or being the possessor. The ancient Egyptians had a concept of the body being a, du a dual system. So there was the seen body and then the invisible body. And this was the same with ancient Greeks. They had the concept of the genius, which you was born with, attached to your body, another body that, you was attached, that was attached to your body from birth. And the Arabic concept of the jinn, who live alongside humans in shadows and in darkness. As Stan points out, there's also a psychological subdivision in our mythologies. So between the old mythologies, such as myths and fairy tales, and folklore, and the new mythologies, which he would classify as science fiction. The old mythologies tend to be about going down. So we have dungeons and into the earth and the underworld and about being possessed. So an inward, an introspection, um, people being possessed by something, you know, like um, in Lord of the Rings, the possession is all internal. Whereas with modern mythologies, such as science fiction, we have the direction being upwards into space, into the sky, and outwards. So we find more AI, robotics, uh, themes of outward possession of humans putting their spirit into an object rather than something from the outside putting its spirit into a human. So there's a duality at play inside the psyche. The stories can be put into three obvious types and then one less obvious type. So the first one is possession from the inside, which is where something inside you takes over your body and leaves you with no control. So this could be Dr. Jekyll or Mr. Hyde, or the zombie story. This, the second type is possession from at the outside. So this would be an outside force possesses you. So that could be Faust or Dracula, where we have something from the outside taking over your body and you becoming them. Zombie also fits into possession from the outside because you can get bitten by a zombie and become a zombie. And then the third type is possession of an inanimate object or people from your perspective. So that would be Frankenstein or anything to do with AI, Kubrick's 2001, the film AI and so on. And then there is a fourth type, which is the only one missing from horror, because it's not, it's not exactly horrible, it's more transcendental, and that is possession of oneself by oneself, which would equate to a sort of unification of the two sides within you. So you being possessed by the other being, the other personality, and it creating some kind of union or connectedness or joining together of the two sides. But this one is never really, we don't see any films about this because it's not as creepy, it's not as horrifying or terrifying. So what, what Stan proposes is that the, the obsession with this, these, two, these two states of possessed 
or possessor stems from the fear and it's a very real fear that we might not be the master of our own bodies and that there is someone or something living inside our bodies alongside us that we are in danger of being overtaken by should we yield any control to it at all. So we notice in the vampire stories that you have to invite the vampire in, you have to invite the possession in. And this is the same in Jekyll and Hyde, you have to drink the elixir to begin the process. So there's something about inviting the other side in. The other side, incidentally, can be equated to some kind of feminine energy. We have the werewolf with the full moon. Obviously, the moon is feminine. We have Dracula with his native soil. So women are fertile or barren, like soil. He also comes out at night, which is another symbol of the feminine, nighttime. Dr. Jekyll is a man of science as opposed to a woman of irrationality. To take it one step further, this isn't actually about masculine and feminine energies. What Stan is proposing is that this is the basis of our split personality, which is the result of our hybrid nature. So the shadow that is being pushed back and kept at bay for fear of overtaking our bodies is our Neanderthal heritage, which lies dormant in the unconscious, waiting for us to invite in to complete the whole picture of what it means to be a human. The fear is the fear of the conscious mind who is essentially afraid of this dark feminine character of the Neanderthal. But the fascination is too much for us. and it comes out in horror, in books, literature, culture, popular films, etc. Because it can't be repressed and it shouldn't be repressed. 